Good evening, family. Welcome this evening to Bible Way Community Baptist Church, the place where Jesus Christ is Lord of all and the Word of God still transform life. We are so excited that you have tuned in this evening to be a part of our Wednesday night broadcast. We hope and pray that you've been having a good week in the Lord. Now, you see me. I got my lit hat on this evening and this is not a fashion statement <laughs> i'm not trying to to be cute or anything like that no i'm i'm still recovering from this you know cold or, or flu or covid or whatever you want to call it and i'm down here at the church i'm by myself even though i got the heater on it's still cold <laughs> in this room back here and so i just got my lit hat on I, I, I done had it on all day, and so I say, ain't no sense in me pulling it off now and still cold. So, um, uh, and I certainly don't want to uh, catch that cold or that flu again or whatever I had. I, I don't want to catch that again. And so uh, I'm just trying to be cautious this evening. I'm just trying to be cautious. And... Uh, uh, I'm just excited that God has given me the health and strength where I can do uh, Wednesday night Bible study. You know, I love <laughs> I love Wednesday night Bible study. I I love Wednesday. I like to preach. Now I like to preach. I like Sunday morning, but Wednesday night Bible study uh, it's just special. It's special to me, and you special to me. I just thank the world of you. You have tuned in because you could have been doing something else, but you have tuned in tonight to be a part of our broadcast. And so I'm thankful to Almighty God. Now, let me uh, uh, just encourage you uh, to stay with your fast. You know, we are fasting. We're fasting here at the church. Uh, we are fasting. We're not doing an absolute fast where we uh, are sustaining from uh, water and food, but we are doing a partial fast where we are giving up certain foods. And some of you are giving up meat. Uh, like myself, I'm giving up all fried meat. I'm not eating anything fried. You know, I like my fried chicken, but I'm giving up my fried chicken, nothing fried, uh, no fried pork chops, <laughs> anything like that. And, uh, and I'm giving up my sweets, the cakes, the honey bombs. I'm, I'm giving it all up, giving it all up uh, because I want God to do some things here at the church and then I want God to do some things in my life. And, uh, and uh, I want you to uh, fast, uh, do without something, do without something, make a sacrifice, show the Lord that I'm willing to put this aside because uh, what I want from you, Lord, is more, more important than this food. And so, and I believe God will bless you. I believe that God will bless you. And I'm just looking forward to hearing a lot of good testimonies on the last uh, Sunday of this month when the fast will be over with. Uh, I'm just looking forward to hearing some good things, how God has really blessed you during this time of fasting. All right, all right, all right, all right. Yes, this is our 21 day fast, but if you didn't start last week, uh, it ain't too late to start now. You just go on a, a 14 day fast or uh, a 12 day fast, whatever uh, it is from now to the end of the month. You just go on and start now. So it ain't too late to start. You go on and, and, and jump in right now. Jump in right now. Starting tonight or start tomorrow. You can fast. You can start fasting with us. All right. All right. Let's go on and get started. Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, this time that you've given to us this evening. We pray now that the words in my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight. For you are my strength. You are my redeemer. So speak to our hearts tonight in a mighty way. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. All right. This is our uh, fifth lesson uh, on the end times. We have went back now to the end times. And uh, this is our fifth lesson. And we're going to be answering the question tonight. Will the same body that go into the grave come out of the grave? Will the same body, this body that goes into the grave when you die, will that same body come out of the grave? You know, I want us to uh, take some time in answering these questions. You know, we've been looking at the resurrection, we've been looking at death, and the reason we're looking at death and the resurrection is because all of us are going to die one day. All of us are going to die. Our loved ones are going to die. If Jesus don't come back, uh, then uh, we're going to die. Our loved ones are going to die. And we need to be able to answer some of these questions, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, with this COVID uh, that's going on since 2020, 2019, uh, our church has been hit real hard, just like other churches have been hit real hard. Every family, every family have just about lost somebody uh, with this COVID. Uh, I lost a niece last year uh, with this COVID. And uh, so, uh, and we buried her. Uh, that same body that went in the grave, would that same body come out the grave? Yeah. Uh, we need to answer that. So I want to help us to answer that question tonight. Uh, yes, I believe, I believe that the Bible teaches, ladies and gentlemen, that that same body that went in that grave, that same body is going to be resurrected uh, out that grave. I believe the Bible teaches that Jesus is going to change our natural bodies into a glorified body. He's going to glorify uh, your body, regardless how long you done been in the grave. You say, well, a lot of people, they done turn to dust. Because, you know, the preachers say ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Yeah, but God knows how to recompose that dust. He knows how to recompose that dust. Uh, he knows how to reassemble that body, wherever it's, it's at, whether it's in the uh, land or whether it's out there in the sea. Uh, God knows how to recompose that body. Look what the Bible says over there in Philippians chapter 3, verse number 20 and 21. It says, for our citizenship is in heaven, from which also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ who shall change, here it is, our lowly body, that it may be fashioned like his glorious body, according to the working by which he's able even to subdue all things unto himself. Jesus is going to take our lowly body, this, this body that's made out of dust, he's going to take that body, and he's going to glorify it and going to change it to a glorified body. And so uh, since our resurrection body will look just like Christ's body, we can use Jesus' resurrection body as an example of our resurrection body. Now let me, let me say that again. Since our resurrection body will look like Christ's body, we can use Jesus' resurrection body as an example of our resurrection body. Since we're going to have a body just like his body, well, let's just look and see the Jesus' body. Uh, that went in the grave, come out of the grave. So that's the question. The question that we should ask is that the same body of Jesus that went into the grave came out of the grave. 
Well, the Bible is going to show that the same body that Jesus had that went in the grave, that same body came out of the grave. Matter of fact, I want to give you five proofs that the body that Jesus had that went in the grave, that same body came out of the grave. The first proof is the empty tomb. That's the first proof. The first proof is the proof of the empty tomb. The proof of the empty tomb is the first proof that the same body that went in the grave is the same body that came out of the grave. Now let's go to the Bible on that. Mark chapter 16, verse number five and six. It says, and entering into this sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they was amazed. And he said to them, be not amazed. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. Now, think about what this angel that done appeared in uh, a fashion of a man. He looks like a young man, this angel. When the ladies, Mary and Mary Magdalene, when they went to the graveyard looking for Jesus, the angel told them, I know you looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified, the one that they nailed to the cross. He said, he has risen. Now notice, he just didn't say he's not here. He told you what happened to the body. The body done been raised. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. In other words, he said, now you can see where they had put him, but he ain't here. He has been raised. He's risen. So the angel, the testimony of the angel says that Jesus done been raised from the grave. That body that went in the grave came out of the grave. So that's the first proof. The proof of the empty tomb. But then there's the second proof. The proof of the crucifixion scars. Scars. Scars, the proof of the crucifixion scars. Look here, John chapter 20, verses 25 through 28. Jesus now is appearing unto his 10 disciples. Thomas is not with him. Oh yeah, yeah. This is the one where Thomas is with him. The other disciples therefore said to him, we have seen the Lord. Oh, I'm sorry. Verse 25 is showing they're talking to Thomas and they're telling Thomas that we have seen the Lord. So Thomas wasn't there early on. But he said to them, except I shall see in his hand the print of the nails and put my fingers into the print of the nail and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. So 
Jesus done appeared to the ten, Thomas wasn't there. And remember, Judas had hung himself. So you only got ten disciples there when Jesus first showed up on Easter day. Thomas wasn't there. He didn't see Jesus. And Thomas says, unless I can put my fingers in the nail print in his hand and put my hand in the spear print in his side, Thomas says, I ain't no believer. In other words, Thomas says, that same body that went in the grave, I want to see that same body coming out unless I'm not going to believe it. Well, look at eight days later. The Bible says, and after eight days, again, his disciples was inside and Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus, the door being shut, and stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. Now think about it. The door is shut, but Jesus just showed up. He didn't have to come through the door. See, with this glorified body, you can appear and disappear just like that. Yeah, once we be, this, our bodies get be glorified, whether well, a person got the door open or closed, it ain't no matter because we ain't no need no door. We're going to appear and disappear just like that. That's what Jesus did. Jesus just appeared just like that. Then said he to Thomas, reach here thy finger and behold my hand. He held out his hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said, my Lord and my God. See, once Jesus showed up and showed the evidence, okay, you, you was looking for the nail prints in my hands. Here it is. You looking for the spear print in my side. Here it is. And when Thomas saw the evidence, Thomas fell down and said, my Lord and my God. In other words, he saw the scars. He saw the wounds. That same body that went in the grave, that same body came out of the grave. All right. So we done saw two proofs. The proof of the empty tomb, the proof of the resurrection scars. But then there is the proof of a flesh and bone body. The proof of a flesh and bones body. Look at what he says. Jesus had flesh and bones before he went out in the grave, but he had flesh and bones when he came out the grave. So that, in other words, it was the same body. Look over here at Luke chapter 24, verses 37 through 40. This is where Jesus uh, had been raised from the dead. He see these two men walking on Damascus Road, or walking on the Emmaus Road, and he walks with them. When he get there to their house, they have dinner. And as they have dinner, he blessed the food. Now watch what happened when he blessed the food. But they was terrified and frightened and supposed they had seen a spirit. And he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your heart? Behold, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself handle me and see, for a spirit has not flesh and bones, and ye see me have. And so uh, this is really when Jesus appeared to his disciples after he had appeared to those two men on the mass road. This is later on. And uh, 
Let me just make sure that that's later on there. Luke chapter 22, verses, uh, I'm sorry, Luke 24, verses 37. Yeah, this is when uh, they had went back to the disciples. Yeah, I was right. This is when they went back. So these are the disciples here. These are the disciples. And, but notice what Jesus says. Why are you troubled? Why are y'all troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your heart? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is myself. Handle me and see. For a spirit, watch what he says, a spirit has not flesh and bone. See, it ain't, it's not going to be a body that looks like Jesus that came from the grave. It wasn't a body that looked like Jesus. It was the actual body of Jesus. In the same way, when you come back from the grave, it ain't going to be a body that looked like your body. Mm -mm. It's going to be your real body, your flesh and your bones. Your flesh and bones. Notice what Jesus says. For a spirit has not flesh and bone. See, we believe in a bodily resurrection. See, there is some teaching out there that says there's a spiritual resurrection. There, you're going to look like yourself, but that's not going to be a real body. That's not going to be the real you. You're going to, you're going to, uh, it's going to resemble you. It's going to resemble that dead body. But it's not going to be that dead body. No, 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 no. It, it's going to be that body. Yeah. Just like uh, when Jesus was raised from the grave and there was a missing body in the tomb, that's what's going to happen to us. That's what's going to happen to us. Uh, the graves are going to pop open. And when those graves pop open, then we're going to come out of those graves. So the graveyard is really a temporary holding space. Yeah, all of us, just like Jesus had a borrowed tomb, you're going to have a borrowed tomb. <laughs> yeah, your, your cemetery plot where they bury you is going to be temporary. You ain't going to stay there forever. You know, instead of it's, it's just a temporary holding uh, place. And so uh, Jesus had a flesh and a bone body. And so uh, uh, that's the third proof. That's the third proof that uh, the body that go in the grave is going to be the same body that come out of the grave. All right, let's look at the fourth proof. The fourth proof is the proof that Jesus ate food. Yeah, the fourth proof is that to show that that body that went in the grave it's the same body that came out of the grave. Is the body that went in the grave, before it went in the grave, it needed food. When the body come out the grave, it's still going to be a body that wants some food. Look at what Jesus says. And it's in the same passage, Luke 24, 41 through 43. See, what he's trying to do, he's trying to show them that this is not a spiritual body. This is not, uh, a, uh, I'm not a, a phantom. You know, a lot of people think it's a phantom or a ghost. You know, that looks like Jesus, but that really wasn't none of Jesus. But Jesus is letting them know, uh-uh, this is me. And this is not a ghost of me. This, <laughs> this is not a phantom of me. Look what he says. Uh, Verse number, chapter 24, verses 41 through 43. And while they yet believe, 
not for joy. See, they couldn't believe it and wondered. He said to them, have ye here anything to eat? Y'all got some food? That's what Jesus is saying. And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and a honeycomb. And he took it and did eat before them. See, why did Jesus ask? Y'all got any food? Why, why did he ask that? Because they was happy to see him, but they couldn't believe that that was that real body that had, was raised from the grave. So Jesus said, let me, let me give him some more evidence that this is me and this is my real body. Because I already done showed him my hands, I already done showed him my side, but they, man, they're so happy they just can't believe it. So Jesus says, y'all got some food? And Jesus, he ate some fish and he ate some honeycomb. He was showing them that this is me, this is me. I, I ate fish and honeycomb before I went into the grave. Now that I done came out of the grave, I'm still eating fish and honeycomb. Amen. Amen. So Christ is showing them, he's showing them that this is an actual bodily resurrection, not a spiritual resurrection. This is an actual bodily resurrection. The body that went in the grave is the same body that then came out the grave. Christ ate before uh, he went in the grave. He had a body that needed food. When he came out the grave, he was still eating food. All right. So that's the fourth proof. All right. I said I was going to give you five. Let's go on to number five. Are you ready for number five? And that's the proof that Jesus' body could be touched. The proof that Jesus' body could be touched touch it could be touch yeah see a ghost you can't touch a ghost you can't feel a ghost yeah because a ghost is a spirit you can't feel a spirit because a spirit is immaterial but Jesus was letting them know no I'm not just immaterial I'm material I'm material look look here uh, the same body before the resurrection could be handled, could be touched. You could see it. You could feel it. The same body after the resurrection. You could feel it. Let's go to the Bible. Matthew 28, 8 and 9. Look at what the text says. And they departed quickly from the sceptical with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples. Behold, Jesus met them saying, all hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. Now you think about that. Think about that. Remember earlier, when they came there to the sceptical, Jesus wasn't there. The angel told them over in Mark's gospel, uh, he is risen. He's not here. Behold the place where he lay. And so they got up and they left out of their sepulcher. And they got started uh, running to go tell the disciples what the angel done told them. But then they bump into Jesus outside the tomb. And, and they did run, because this is what the Bible said, to bring the, uh, his disciples. But behold, Jesus met them, saying, hell, <coughs> telling them, hey, stop. And they came, and they held him by the feet and worshiped him. They grabbed him down there by the ankles the feet, and they worship him. They worship him. So that lets you know right there 
that he could be touched. If, if his body was a ghost, you can't, they couldn't have touched him. <coughs> now, look over here at John's gospel. John chapter 20, verse number 16 through 17. And I'm reading it out of the New American Standard Bible. And uh, this is still on Easter morning. Jesus done got uh, raised from the grave, but it tells it, John tells it from Mary Magdalene perspective. And Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, stop clinging to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Now, so Mary, when she grabbed the Mary Magdalene, she held on to him. And Jesus had to tell Mary Magdalene, Mary, uh, stop clinging to me. Quit holding me. I got to go to heaven and I got to, you know, present the blood. He had, he said, I hadn't yet ascended. So quit trying to hold me down here. You're trying to, to keep me. See, once she saw Jesus, she grabbed him and she tried to hold on to him. But Jesus said, you're going to have to let me go, Mary. You're going to have to let me go. And so uh, if Jesus would have had just a spirit body, she wouldn't have been able to grab him. But she grabbed him so, and Jesus had to tell him, let me go, let me go. So that lets you know that was a real body. That's a real body. And so the body that went in the grave is the same body that is, came out of the grave. So we don't answer the question. Will the same body that goes into the grave come out of the grave? Yes. The same body that goes in the grave is going to come out of the grave. And we've looked at the five proofs. The proof of the empty tomb. That's the first proof. Number two, the proof of the crucifixion scars. The second proof. The third proof, the proof of a flesh and bone body. Proof number four, the proof that Jesus ate food. And proof number five, the proof that Jesus' body could be touched. It could be touched. So how should we respond to this lesson? Number one, believe. Believe in the resurrection. Believe in the resurrection. Just like Jesus had a resurrection, believe that your loved ones are going to be resurrected. Believe that when you die, you're going to be resurrected. Believe in the resurrection. Number two, number two, proclaim. Proclaim the proof of the resurrection. Yeah, uh, let somebody them know, I know that I'm gonna be resurrected all because uh, there's an empty tomb and one day there's, I'm gonna have an empty grave. Proclaim uh, uh, the proof and these are the proof. I done gave you the proof of the resurrection because the day we living in a day and age that people don't believe in Jesus and they don't believe in the resurrection, ladies and gentlemen. But, but let them know, uh-uh, yeah, we're going to be able to uh, eat food because Jesus was able to eat food. We're going to have a, a flesh and bone body because Jesus had a flesh and bone body. Uh, uh, we're going to be able to be touched. We're going to be able to touch one another. Why? Because Jesus' body was able to be touched. And so, ladies and gentlemen, based on what happened to Jesus, it's the same thing that's going to happen unto you. And so, what's the last thing? The last thing, be ready. Be ready. 
Be ready for Jesus return. Be ready for Jesus return. Jesus is coming back again. He's coming back and he's coming back for his church without a spot or a blemish. He's coming back for those who have already died, that has already died in Christ and they are in the grave. If he came back today, uh, he will shout at the, at the voice, the shout of the archangel. The Bible says that dead in Christ is going to rise first. And then we who are alive, we're going to be changed and we're going to be caught up together with them in the air. And we're going to forever be with the Lord. Comfort one another with these words. So be ready. Be ready for Christ's return. He's coming back again. If you haven't received Christ as your personal Savior, do that today. Open up your heart and tell the Lord, Lord, I've sinned. I've come short of your glory. Forgive me of my sins. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And I believe with all my heart that you raised him from the dead. And based on the word of God, I now believe that I'm now saved. So you want to be ready because when Jesus come back, you can't be getting ready. Uh-uh. You got to already be ready. The Bible says, be you also ready for the moment that you think not the Son of Man coming. Well, that's our lesson for tonight. God bless you. May God keep you is our prayer. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this word. Take this word and use it to bring honor and glory to your holy and righteous name. Lord, I pray for those that are sick, touch their bodies, heal their bodies, make their bodies hold again. I pray for those who are without jobs, get them good jobs, dear Lord. I pray for... The those who already have jobs, but they're having trouble on the job. I pray that you will bring about peace, dear God. I pray for those who are having trouble in their home. I pray that you bring peace in their home and bless everybody under the sound of my voice with the blessing they stand in need of. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen. Well, God bless you. Have a good night. And we'll see you on Sunday.